I thought I was having a dream. Miss Philippines runner-up was right in the bed next to me. Oh my God. Hey guys, have you ever been charmed by a young, pretty charm school graduate? Today it's Charm School, how to be charming and how to detect when someone's pulling your strings and charming you. Stick around, we're gonna show you what it's like in an age gap relationship with a rapid fire session. Do you have a special skill of resisting a woman's charm? Or are you just like the other men out there that just falls for a woman's charm? Hey girl, I met this older man in the dating site. And he's so gullible. He just believes everything that I say. Yeah, you know me. I'm a charm school graduate. How would you know that you are being manipulated by a woman that is a charm school graduate? Just like me. Have you ever noticed how a sincere compliment can brighten someone's day? Have you met a charm school graduate? What are you to do? Half of the women on these online dating sites are not for real. They're women whose job it is to shake your money tree and get a little change out of your pocket. But the other half are really sincere women who have made the decision that if you can provide security, they can actually find romance in an age gap relationship. Yes, they're looking for security, but they're looking for love. Now, you've met these women. They're so soft-spoken. They're so kind. They're full of compliments. My gosh, they're charm school graduates. How in the world do you know if you're just having smoke blown up your... Or they're sincere. They really do like your big nose. They think that red hair growing out of your ears is handsome. They think that dad bod is ideal. They think you look like Richard Gere. Can you believe it? But they actually find you exotic. Some of these women are real and we don't want to run away from someone who's sweet, sincere, and knows how to deliver a compliment. And as an older man talking to a beautiful younger woman, we are really susceptible to charm. The women you're chatting to in Asia, in Mexico, in Ecuador, and other Thailand, uh, Philippines, their job is to get you hooked, hooked on them as the uh, person that you are going to provide security for. They find you an acceptable partner, and if you can come to their country or bring them back to your country, they will make the deal. They will give you love and affection and truly mean the charming things they say to you. You look like Richard Gere. Actually, better than Richard Gere. She says the most charming things to me and I'm always telling her, you're a charm school graduate. So when we were talking online, I was on this cruise ship from Sao Paulo, Brazil, 21 days out in the middle of the ocean with bad Wi-Fi. And this person is telling me all these charming things. Oh my God, I just love your hair. And I'm thinking to myself, gosh, she sounds so sincere, but it's a lot of charm being sent my way. I'm getting charmed every day. You have a great sense of style. Bouncing around on the high seas. I love your dad, buddy. I'm hearing all this charm. I'm starting to believe it. Well. You know, in my case, I came to the Philippines. I met Chrissy. She kept charming me. It's six months later. She kept charming me. I'm uh, doing my due diligence. You know, I think the most important thing is you got to have some common sense. You don't want to uh, buy a person a house, bring a $10,000 diamond ring to your first meeting. You don't want to get married. You don't want to pay for the visa in the first month. You want to spend a year with a person minimum and find out if they're full of it, if that's all charm school nonsense because it's manipulation, or you want to find out if they're actually, honestly, a real amazing partner. Maybe your dream is to have a dream similar to the one I'm living. I'm kind of living a dream. So, gentlemen. You really have a great sense of style, and you dress up like a movie star. Wow. We all like to hear that. That compliment goes beyond appearance and speaks to a sense of personal taste. You know, when you go shopping at uh, for clothing, 
the commission saleswoman or salesman walks up to you and says, wow, that's a great color on you. Boy, it really shows off your figure. That's a great fit. Oh, that's a slim fit on you. That color brings out your eyes. My God, you know they're working for commission. You believe them. You're not going to believe your own eyes when you look in the mirror. You're going to actually let them influence you. You're going to buy way more clothing than you need to. When you are charming to another or you receive uh, someone else's charm at a sincere level, it's very complimentary. And now let's talk about how to handle being charming and how to handle receiving charming compliments and detect whether they're manipulative. So now, what if you've met a charm school graduate? She's not a scammer, but she could be someone who is manipulating you because she has learned the lesson of the power of charm, the power of a compliment. And maybe they're not always sincere. So what do we need to look out for? Consistency in behavior. Hi, baby, my honey, my love, so sweet. Hey, baby, you're so handsome. Mm. Genuine charm is consistent over time. If someone's charm seems to fluctuate dramatically based on their needs or desires, it might be a sign of manipulation. Intent and reciprocity. Baby, you're so handsome and you're so kind. By the way, I'm out of load. I need a load so that we can still video chat. Honest charm is motivated by a desire for positive interactions and connection. If someone's charm seems driven solely by personal gain without reciprocating positive actions, it may be manipulative. Body language and eye contact. Pay attention to the body language and eye contact. Honest communication is often accompanied by open body language, while manipulative behavior might involve avoidance or evasiveness. Respect for boundaries. You know what, baby? I really want to be with you already because, you know, I love you so much. So. Why don't you just retire early, please? Genuine charm respects personal boundaries. If someone consistently crosses those boundaries or pressures you, it could indicate manipulation. Consistent empathy. Honest charm involves genuine empathy and understanding. If charm is used to exploit emotions without a real connection, it may be manipulative. Transparency in communication. Thank you, by the way, for sending me money for groceries. My family's really enjoyed it. But I'm so sorry I did not take any photo of the grocery that I bought because I was too busy and um, I don't think where did I put the receipts. Honest individuals communicate openly and transparently. If there's a lack of transparency or evasive responses, it might be a red flag. Feedback from others. What do you mean that your mom and your best friend saying that I'm not sincere to you? I'm telling you the truth. You're so handsome. You look like Richard Gere. You're so awesome. You're generous. You're genuine. And you're so kind. Well, you know me better than them. So just believe me, okay? Pay attention to how others perceive the person. If multiple people express discomfort or mention manipulation, it's worth considering. Understanding motivations. Baby, you have a very good voice. Why don't you buy me a karaoke system so that when you're here, we can sing together? Honest individuals are clear about their motivations. If someone's charm seems driven by unclear or self-serving motives, it could be manipulative. Consistency in tone or language. Baby, I can't talk now. I have a headache and I feel bored. Genuine charm maintains a consistent tone and language. If someone's language drastically changes to suit different situations, it may be manipulation. Follow through on promises. Honey, you're so kind and generous, but I haven't signed up for school yet because it's holiday and I have to visit my family. So I think um, it's smart if I'm going to use that money first to go to the family and visit them and have a party with them and maybe just sign up in school next year. Honest individuals tend to follow through on promises made during charming interactions. If you're interested in a genuine connection, you truly admire somebody, you truly like them, you want to enhance the closeness you feel, go ahead and use these compliments. Let's start with the basics. Empathy matters. Saying, I can see how much you care about others and your family's situation. It shows you notice and appreciate their compassion. Did, did you ever want to express gratitude sincerely, genuinely? Saying, 
I appreciate your kindness is a really good way to do it. And it can leave a lasting impression. Highlight the other person's attributes. Oh, your dedication and your commitment really impresses me. When you acknowledge effort, it fosters a positive connection. Gosh, you know, you're facing so many challenges and you're going to school at night in addition to working. That really impresses me. Your optimism is contagious and makes any situation better. Acknowledging someone else's wisdom, uh, the lessons they've learned in life, is very powerful. I've learned so much from your experience. Thank you for sharing that with me. You really have developed a keen sense of how to handle things. Your insights are truly valuable. Focusing on the present. I really enjoy our conversations. They make my day so much better. Thank you for being who you are. Offering a thoughtful compliment about a young woman's character. Your honesty and integrity really stand out. It's genuinely remarkable. It's truly admirable. Encouraging another person's passions. Your dedication to art, music, insert a hobby here, is inspiring. I'd love to learn more from you. Highlight their uniqueness. I've always admired your individuality. You bring something special to every situation. Express your admiration. Your resilience in facing challenges is truly something I admire. A genuine expression of support. I believe in your abilities, and I know you can overcome any obstacle. Try and close your conversation on a positive note. Spending time with you always makes me feel uplifted and grateful. Remember, the key is authentic positivity. Remember, these indications aren't foolproof and context matters. How about sex? We're gonna talk about, did we argue? The 55 ways. A fast countdown of the 55 things that can screw up your relationship once you've already fallen in love. Play along, get a pen and pencil. We want to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and like. 55, it's like a speed limit. Here we go. Number one, age and generational differences. Number two, cultural disparities and misunderstandings. Number three, language barriers. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, financial disagreements. No. Uh, none. Number five, differences in lifestyle expectations. Uh, nothing. Number six, variations in religious or spiritual beliefs. Number seven, issues related to family involvement. Number eight, differences in social and friend circles. Okay. Yeah. Number nine, expectations regarding children and parenting. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, career and work-related conflict. Yeah, we talked about it, like... The conflicts. Oh, conflicts. Conflicts, no. okay. <laughs> Number 11, immigration and visa challenges. Talk. Talk. Number 12, housing and living arrangements. Number 13, personal space and privacy issues. Talk. Talk. Number 14, health and healthcare disparities. Number 15, food and dietary preferences. Number 16, travel and vacation disagreement. Number 17, social norms and etiquette. Number 18, jealousy or insecurity. <laughs> Number 19, technology and digital habits. I think we argued about that. Number 20, long distance relationship challenges. Number 21, trust and fidelity concerns. Uh, but you're very jealous. Talk. Talk. Number 22, expat community dynamics. We definitely talked about that. Mm -hmm. Number 23, disagreements over gender roles. Uh, no. we've never had one. Number 24, emotional baggage from previous relationships. Yeah. Number 25, problems with local bureaucracy. Nah. Number 26, differing political views. Nah. Number 27, expectations related to social media presence. Nah. Okay. Number 28, concerns about legal rights and protections. Nah. 
Number 29, mental health and well-being issues. No. <laughs> Number 30, complications from different time zones. We talked about that. Yeah. yeah well, when you went back to yeah. USA. Number 31, misunderstandings related to cultural customs. Mm, no. Yeah, Not yet. Yeah, <laughs> I think we talked about it. Number 32, personal hygiene and cleanliness. Mm. Uh, number 33, issues with transportation and mobility. No. no. Number 34, disputes over home decor and aesthetics. No. Number 35, cultural events and holidays. We talked talk about, about it. it. Yeah. Number 36, alcohol and substance abuse. No. no. Number 37, household and domestic responsibilities. We talked talk about, about it. it. Yeah. Number 38, personal interests and hobbies. We talked talk about, about it. it. Yeah. Number 39, privacy and boundaries with family. We talked talk about, about it. it. Number 40, expectations regarding gifts and celebrations. Mm, no. No, no, we did not. Number 41, environmental concerns. Yes. Number 42, trust issues due to previous relationships. I think we've argued about it. Because <laughs> she's jealous. Number 43, career ambitions and aspirations. Stop. Number 44, financial support for extended family. Number 45, wedding and marriage customs. Number 46, differences in fashion and attire. Have we talked about it? We have talked about it. You want me to wear bikinis? <laughs> <laughs> Just to be comfortable. Number 47, entertainment choices and interests. We talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Number 48, security and safety concerns. We definitely talked about it. Number 49, discrimination or prejudice from others. I think we talked, we had that stink eye that one time we had stink eye. Oh, once. Eye. Once. You had stink eye from the guy, the, mecha the mechanic. Well, we talked about it. We nothing. talked about it, yeah. Number 50, coping with homesickness. No, mm. I don't think we ever done. Number 51, age related health disparities. Not, Not really. really. We haven't talked about it. Number 52, transportation and commuting challenges. We've talked about transportation challenges. Yeah. Number 53, miscommunication due to texting or messaging. No. No. Number 54, impact of local traditions and superstitions. We've talked about this. <laughs> Sikhi oh, yeah. And last but not least, number 55, educational differences and goals. We've talked about it. <laughs> so Chrissy, we seem to have talked about things more than we argued about things. How about sex? We didn't talk about sex. Oh, Chrissy, we've got 55 things people talk about, but, the, you know, we left one thing off the list. What? Well, they say don't talk about politics, religion, or sex. Yeah. So we didn't talk about sex. Yep. Did we ever argue about sex? No. No. Did we talk about it? Yeah, we talked about, we talked about it. it. Hey, guys, thank you for watching. I think it's time to start planning. If you haven't watched it yet, start watching our 90-day plan and our first year expat housing plan. Till next time, from flying to the Philippines, see you in our next video.